Gentlemen, would you please remove your caps and would everyone please rise for our national anthem. Members of the Board of Education, Mr. Jones, Central Office Administrators, faculty, parents, grandparents, family members, friends, and of course, members of the North Farmington High School graduating class of 2007. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2007 graduation of North Farmington High School. I'm pleased to join you today to celebrate this important milestone and to spend a few minutes reflecting with you about the significance of this graduating class of 2007 and opportunities for success beyond high school. As this is a dignified ceremony, we ask that no air horns or whistles be allowed during the proceedings and we appreciate turning off the cell phones. We thank you very much for your cooperation. To the graduates, today we celebrate an important milestone in your life. Your high school graduation is a significant accomplishment and we are all very proud of you. But these commencement exercises represent more than the completion of your formal schooling. They also represent for you a new beginning, hence the term commencement exercises, the beginnings of the next stage in your life as an adult. But to start, let's begin by reflecting on what and who has contributed to this important milestone. Certainly it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the contributions of some very important people. First, the Farmington Public School District is an important component of your success. It is represented here today by the Board of Education, its faculty, and staff. Thus, it is my pleasure to introduce the members of the Farmington Board of Education who are with us today. These outstanding citizens are committed to providing the students of Farmington and Farmington Hills communities with an excellent education from preschool through high school. I'll ask the board members to stand as I call their name, and I'll ask you to hold your applause until the end. So please join me in welcoming Mrs. Karen Bolson, President, Howard Wallach, Vice President, Frank Reed, Secretary, Priscilla Briette, Treasurer, Debbie Brower, Trustee, Sheila Clay, Trustee, and Gary Sharp, Trustee. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. In addition to the Board of Education, the faculty and staff of the Farmington Public Schools have played a vital role in your success. 
I'm pleased to introduce to you members of our Central Office Administration who provide support to the overall operations of the school district so that every student can achieve success. Again, please stand as I call your name. Dr. Katherine Cost, Assistant Superintendent for Instructional Services. David Ruland, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Esther Lee Michelson, who is working in the area, making things go so smoothly, is the Executive Director of Safe Schools and Student Services. Mary Reynolds, Executive Director of Business Services. Samir Haddad, Executive Director of Instructional Equity and Support Services. Diane Bauman, Director of School and Community Relations and Michelle Harmala, Director of Special Education. Please join me in giving these people a round of applause as well. Since coming to North Farmington High, you've been served by an outstanding group of educators, teachers, counselors, and support staff. Many of them are here today to pay tribute to you. I would like the graduates and their parents to recognize these outstanding educators and if they would please stand so we can give you a round of applause. Please stand on the stage, teachers, faculty. And, certainly not least, the North Farmington High School administration has also made significant contributions to your success by ensuring that you've had outstanding teachers, multiple opportunities to be involved in your school, and a deep and rich curriculum that has placed North Farmington High in the top high schools in the United States in the Newsweek's annual poll, and this year was recognized as one of the top 382 schools in the ACT. Thus, it's my pleasure to introduce to the audience your principal, Mr. Rick Jones, and assistant principals, Deanne Lacey and Mark Wilson. And please join me in recognizing your senior class advisor, Mr. Kevin Ozar. Please stand. Kevin. Finally, graduates, we need to recognize and thank your first and lifelong teachers, your parents. Your parents have taught you the basic lessons you will need throughout your life. They've encouraged you to not give up when you've failed. They've given you focus. They've set limits when you've needed them. And they've provided you with unconditional love and support so that you have the tools you need to successfully navigate the next part of your life's journey. So today is a very special day for your parents as they take great pride in what you've done to this point and look forward with great optimism to what you will become in the next phase of your life. I ask the graduates and the staff of the Farming and Schools to join me in applauding all your parents. One of my favorite quotations is from Gandhi. Be the change you want to see in the world. I believe this quote is exemplified in the book and more recently the movie, The Freedom Writer's Diary. I hope many of you have had the opportunity to read the book or see this inspirational movie. It's the incredible real life account through journal entries of 150 so-called at-risk potential high school dropouts from Long Beach, California, a diverse urban suburb outside of Los Angeles, and the tale of their naive first-year English teacher. How these teens, through their writing, changed themselves and the world around them. Their teacher, Erin Gruwell, came from a privileged background far removed from the world of her students. Yet together, they were able to cross the great divides of culture, language, religion, class, and income to create a force for good within themselves that changed their world forever. The story begins with these so-called at-risk students as ninth graders. And like our graduates here today, concludes with their graduation from high school 
with all 150 of those students entering college in the fall. Through their four years, four high school years, a metamorphosis occurs. They start off disaffected, disconnected, angry, engaged in gangs, and isolated within their own racial and ethnic groups. But after reading the diary of Anne Frank and raising funds for a readathon for tolerance, they arrange to meet Miep Gies, the courageous Dutch woman who sheltered, much to her own peril, Anne Frank and her family in her home during the Holocaust. Then the students read Zlata's diary, a child's life in Sarajevo, the real life diary of a child growing up in war-torn Bosnia. They decide to write letters inviting Z Zlata Filipovic to come to the United States, to California, and amazingly, she does. Meeting her, they discover that Zlata, who is also 15 years old at the time, is no different than they are. She likes the same music, she likes the same clothes, and they share the same interests. This is when it becomes clear to them that they would carry Anne and Zlata's message of tolerance as their cause. They learned from Zlata and from Meep Gies that ordinary people, just like themselves, can do courageous things to make the world a better place. Taking the name Freedom Writers from the Freedom Riders of the 1960s Civil Rights Movement, they used their writings to become the change they wanted to see in the world. Just like the Freedom Writers, you have learned to become the change you want to see in the world. You have spent these past two years engaged in two interdisciplinary studies that have inspired you to become courageous leaders for change. In your junior year, you learned about the 1960s, a period of great upheaval and change in our nation's history, a time period when many young people like yourselves risked their own lives to stand up for a cause they believed in. Then your senior year, studying genocide, humanity in crisis, you learned how ordinary people, like Paul, Rosessa Bagina, became heroes, standing up against enormous evil by providing refuge to save the lives of over 1,200 people from the Rwandan genocide. The book ends as the freedom writers prepare for graduation. One student writes, Graduation is just around the corner, and I feel like this fake smile is molded into my skin. I'm torn between happiness and sadness, like something has got a hold of my heart and is pulling it in two directions. No matter which way I go, it seems like the other side is tugging harder. So just like today's North Farmington class of 2007, the Freedom Writers were feeling excited about the next phase of their lives, but sad to leave the world of high school and friends behind. As you leave high school behind and enter the next phase of your life, I know you will keep the spirit of the Freedom Writers alive in you. Whether it is by leading a rally against the genocide in Darfur, or advocating to enact legislation, or volunteering to support a cause you believe in, I know this North Farmington High School class of 2007 will leave an incredible legacy of hope, courage, and determination as you become the change you want to see in the world. So in closing, to the North Farmington High School class of 2007, just like the Freedom Riders of the 1960s and the Freedom Writers of today, I believe you have the vision to go forward balanced with hope and optimism that will translate into a genuine commitment to make this a better world. You have been well served by your families, your school, and your community. I know you will do great things. Best wishes and congratulations, North Farmington High School Class of 2007. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of the senior class, Amber Rosizi.
Mrs. Zervalik, Board of Education, distinguished alumnus recipient, teachers, parents, grandparents, and friends. It's an honor to speak on behalf of the class of 2007. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said, whatever course you decide upon, there is always someone to tell you that you are wrong. There are always difficulties arising which tempt you to believe that your critics are right. To map out a course of action and follow it to an end requires courage. A qu courage, a quality not always widely on display, is something so evident in the class of 2007, and the ways in which we displayed our courage will forever be remembered at North Farmington. We had the courage to take on a difficult interdisciplinary study, humanity and crisis genocide, to raise awareness and to attempt to make a difference for something so significant in the world right now. The courage to embrace the unknown and fight that which displeased us, because we know we shouldn't have to settle. We had the courage to be role models, to set examples, because we know we should sacrifice our own pride for the common good. We had the courage to embrace a school culture where it's okay for everyone to belong. We are extremely fortunate to attend a school such as North Farmington. With its consistently high academic standards, we grow through the constant challenges we are lucky to face. I use the word lucky only because that is exactly what we are. We are lucky to have teachers, parents, counselors, advisors, and coaches who challenge us and believe in us each day. They challenge us to make us grow. They challenge us to show us that there isn't anything we shouldn't attempt, that we really can accomplish anything. And we did. With courage, we faced interdisciplinary study, our heads held high, mature, setting examples, knowing that in a class we would follow. Mr. Jones once said to me, if any class can set the tone for an interdisciplinary study on a topic as difficult as genocide, it's the class of 2007. The interdisciplinary study was not the only challenge the class of 2007 faced throughout our four years at North. Each year, we made decisions that would change our high school career for the better or for the worse. We chose what classes to take, what sports teams to try out for, and what clubs to join. And we asked ourselves, if I do this now, is it going to change my life forever? The answer was yes. High school, as we learned, shapes the person you'll become. Sure, we will go on to change even more throughout the next steps we take in life, but North will always be where we started. It will always define much of who we are. This realization, although audacious, was the reason we conquered yet another challenge with courage. We made tough decisions and moved on to our next feats because we knew that's what it would take to become the people we are. We knew we'd face situations that would try our character. We did it though, with courage. Soon, we were faced with the toughest of them all, next year and beyond. For some, it was whether or not to attend college, to go into the military, or to go to work. For others, it was which one to attend. With the help of those important to us at home and at North, however, we once again made the decisions necessary and now we will continue on to the next place our paths lead us. While we may not fear it, we are anxious about the road ahead, yet we will face it with courage. And as for the paths that we have already taken, they will act as the beginning, the first steps that will lead us to what we hope and I know will be a successful future. However, we must look back on what has shaped who we are today. As I have said before, the most important tool in finding ourselves has been North Farmington. A place that we can call home, North has not only been a place of comfort for many, but a place to develop into the people we want to become. The class of 2007 has so much to be proud of. We continue to uphold the academic standards that past students have set for us. We, we learned that although we are still young, we can make a difference. We were never silent bystanders. We led marches around our community opposing genocide and helped raise awareness. We raised money to buy malaria nets for the people in refugee camps in Africa, hoping to provide comfort. We had seniors placed first at States for DECA, and our newspaper won one of the highest honors in Michigan, the Spartan Award. We have students attending prestigious schools such as MIT and Vanderbilt, and continuously, every year, we shock audiences with breathtaking performances by our theatrical productions. So what has the class of 2007 not accomplished to make ourselves worthy in brown and gold? Nothing. We are brown and gold. It is because of this that I am confident that our class will be able to face the challenges our generation will be forced to deal with. 
the results and consequences of globalization, the issues concerning global warming, and the poverty, hunger, and racism. Soon we will have the opportunity to vote. Given this responsibility, we will educate ourselves and with courage, make decisions and take action in order to make a difference. As students, we were able to accomplish these incredible achievements due to courage. However, we cannot give ourselves all the credit. The courage was given to us from the people from home and school and the important people who make those days what they are for us for four years. North Farmington was a home away from home, a place to develop into the people we want to become. On behalf of my entire class, I would, just, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has made a difference in our lives and to my classmates, the class of 2007. Let's face each step in, the exact, in our lives in the exact same manner that we have faced each challenge at North with courage. Because we now know, as cliche as it may sound, we can accomplish anything we put our minds to. And if you are ever fearful that you have lost your path, remember that we are a family. And like so many have done for us before, we can give each other the courage to continue on. Thanks. Mrs. Zervalik, Board of Education, Board President Amber, distinguished alumnus recipient, faculty, families, and friends. As principal of North Farmington High School, it's my distinct pleasure and honor to present the North Farmington High School graduating class of 2007. For the past four years, you, the class of 2007, have written your stories individually and collectively, and in so doing, have not only expanded your minds, but have touched our hearts. You've been an incredibly wonderful class, and we're here today to honor your achievements, to celebrate your journey. But graduations are somewhat strange events in that they purport to honor individuals, but in reality, they celebrate institutions or more accurately yet, they celebrate students and staff who have shaped the character and conscience of institutions. Graduating with you today are 17 members of North faculty, people who have between them 578 years of teaching. They come from science and English, Spanish and French, phys ed and special ed, counseling and life management, art and business. Jan Carlton, Louise Conway, Barbara Dubb, Karen Fader, Pat Foster, Susan Grant, Lenore Hawkins, Christine Hosman, Mary Keene, Carol Kunzel, Linda Letheman, Pam Soffron, Jack Schulman, Chuck Stenius, Bev Schmidt, Julie Wilson, and Jane Williams. These 17 marvelous people who have made teaching their life's work have served generations of families who call North Farmington home. They embody so much of our history, so much of what defines who we are as a place of learning. Their dedication and service, commitment and caring, passion and professionalism have shaped the lives of students, indeed have shaped the life of this wonderful school. To each of you, please know that as you enter retirement, that we appreciate your vision, your talent, and your spirit. It has been a privilege to work with you and we wish you only the richest of life's blessings. Earlier this year, back during Spirit Week, Class Color Day, dozens of seniors crowded into the front lobby chanting, 07, 07, 07. And I clambered into the middle of them and began to chant, 67, 67, 67. Amid all the noise, I believe only one senior heard me, and she began to laugh hysterically. And then she commented, 67, 67, you really are old. Now, she was either being serious or just teasing me. Now, obviously, I prefer the latter interpretation over the former. Nevertheless, it caused me to pause 40 years. Why, it seems like it was just yesterday 
Yet it's been 40 years since I graduated from North, 40 years since graduation 1967, the occasion where I had the honor to speak to my class, as Amber did with you, but I can assure you with not nearly the grace or eloquence. But in that 40 years, so much has happened. The great society, rioting in the streets, an assassination in Memphis, another Kennedy slain in LA, the Chicago Seven, Eight Mile, Motown, Hollywood, a Black Fist Olympic salute, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, Title IX, one giant leap for womankind, Woodstock, Watergate, CIAs, PTAs, PLOs, the fall of Saigon, a presidential resignation, a presidential pardon, a presidential peanut farmer, Hostages in Iran, an Olympic boycott, John Lennon shot, bless you boys, bad boys, challenger astronauts, Reaganomics, cold wars, hot wars, apartheid, and iron curtains coming down. The first George Bush, desert storm. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. HIV, AIDS, we are the world concerts. Bill, Hillary, Monica, impropriety and impeachment. Kurds and Serbs, Rwanda, Somalia and Sudan. Columbine, Lord Stanley's Cup, skyrocketing health insurance, skyscrapers coming down, terrorist cells, ground zero, Al-Qaeda, George W., a war in Afghanistan and a war in Iraq, no child left behind, tsunamis, Katrina, global warming, white collar crime, same sex marriage, school spending, big three, auto unions, identity fraud, Virginia Tech, downsizing, outsourcing, and out of breath, 40 years. 40 years, as it seems, in the blink of an eye. And in that same 40 years, so much else has happened. College, grad school, falling in love, 34-year teaching career, two kids, three rabbits, 10 cats, two grand dogs, lost four grandparents, buried a father-in-law and a brother, walked two daughters down the aisle, celebrated a 35th wedding anniversary and worked with the most amazing students, colleagues, and families that anyone could ever ask for. I routinely wear two rings, my wedding ring and my north ring, which I have on today. They both mean so much to me, although Kathy on a regular basis challenges me as to which one means the most. But as I said, they both mean so much to me. They both keep me grounded reminding me of responsibilities, obligations, and those things that really matter. My family, my friends, and my work. And of course, as you graduate, that's what we wish for you. Family, friends, and meaningful work. We trust that your education, values, and understanding of what's important will allow you to make decisions, impact policies, reduce conflict, and improve quality of life. Your education here and beyond will give you the capacity to cope with new ideas, to respond to new situations, to foster independent thought, to embrace and respect difference, skills which will largely define the ultimate success of your generation. I'm confident that I can speak for all of the adults here when I say that we wish, indeed we pray, that over the next four decades, your generation will find answers to pollution and pandemics, will author solutions absent assassination and war, will mend broken promises of never again, will put principles, that's PLE, before products, will champion people before bottom lines. We wish, indeed we pray, over the next 40 years that you find time for both theater and stadium. Find time to climb a mountain and stare at a lake. That you find time for good long walks and good long books. We wish, indeed we pray, over the next 40 years that you find time to meet the demands of your kids and the demands of your boss and balance them accordingly. We wish that you find time for travel to distant lands and time for candlelight dinners at home. We wish, indeed we pray, that over the next 40 years that you have a lifetime of enlightened conversations and engagement in important causes. We wish for you 
in the next 40 years the realization that in building a more just, healthy, and self-fulfilling life for your children, that there is no choice but to contribute to the same destiny for all children. Finally, I wish that you would invite me to your 40-year reunion. Yes, I still plan to be here, not necessarily at North, <laughs> but still here. And that what one of you says, you really are old, that you won't laugh hysterically, but will quietly say, hey, you, Mr. Class of 67, I think you'd be proud of us. We really made a difference. Now, Ms. Bolson, members of the Best Board of Education in America, I certify that the members of the North Farmington High School graduating class of 2007, sitting before you, have completed all the requirements of the Farmington Public Schools and its Board of Education, and that they should be expected to lead, to make a difference, and be allowed to graduate today. Thank you, Mr. Jones, and greetings, students, families, faculty, administration, and my fellow board members. I'm especially honored to address you today, for I too am a Farmington Schools graduate, albeit a number of years ago. This is an occasion filled with such pride and emotion. It is truly a day of transition from many years of growth. You will be moving into a new world of hopes and dreams as you walk through the doors of CompuWare as graduates this evening, this afternoon. Students, you, your families, and our staff have worked hard to achieve the accomplishments you've made. Celebrate these successes and honor your past. And embrace the future. Change can be scary, but very exciting. While you still will have the love and support of all of us, you'll be facing more independent choices than you ever have before. More than anything, rely on what's inside of you to meld with the world, to live a happy, fulfilled life. In the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. This is a time of celebration, a time for gifts and sharing. Today I wish to share a cherished gift with you that was given to me on my 13th birthday. In the same vein as Emerson contemplating what lies within us, this gift has always been a reminder of what should lie within me. In celebration of my first birthday as a teenager, my brother and hero, Hank, wrote me a letter with some simple yet sound thoughts. He was 22 at the time when he wrote this note, a North Farmington graduate, a member of the Raider class of 1965. His message was simple, however, Hank never knew at the time he wrote that letter the impact it would have on the rest of my life. He died in a car accident 11 months later. Nearly 38 years hence, I still cherish his words and use them as a guideline. I'd like to share them with you as you begin a new phase of your life. His words of wisdom to me were, I am giving you some brotherly advice which I think will help you enjoy life and appreciate it to a fuller extent. He went on to write, a few facets of life which I consider extremely worthwhile are love, education, sincerity, hard work, integrity, and the appreciation of others. Please remember these, Karen, your loving brother, Hank. Let's take just a few minutes to ponder his thinking. Love is vital to our existence. Without love and appreciation for others, life's material successes are empty and meaningless. A full and happy life is so much more than how much money you earn, how many degrees you have, or how many honors are bestowed upon you. I don't mean to discount any of those achievements. They're all admirable and often desirable parts of a successful life. But in our fast-paced world today, we sometimes lose sight of the fullness in life, of the importance of the relationships we make with friends or siblings, parents, and our other loved ones. 
I agree with Mrs. Servalek, as she mentioned in her speech, turning to one another is vital to the world. Education, it is the gateway to your future. Learning need not be confined to classrooms or universities into the early years of life. You must explore learning forever in books, in newspapers, in conversation with trusted colleagues, and with those who seem different in opinion or appearance from you. Engage all your senses in learning by appreciating art, music, and nature. Search to broaden your thoughts and the thoughts of others. There is so much to learn, and as you build your basis of knowledge, reevaluating what you once thought is a constant struggle and a joy. Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. stated, man's mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimension. Educated men and women are not necessarily those with the most degrees, but those who seek knowledge until their days are done. We encourage you to do both, seek degrees in formal knowledge, and be informal learners for the rest of your life, however old you are and wherever you may be. Sincerity was my brother's third thought. Sincerity is underrated. In this world of awesome, I find myself pausing when I close a note or letter with the phrase sincerely. In some ways, it seems old-fashioned or boring, but it is still appropriate, appropriate because it is important to mean what you say and say what you mean in a kind but honest way. To me, that is sincerity. Hard work. Find your passions and love what you do. Then hard work is fun and a joyous part of life rather than a laborious time spent doing what you're supposed to do to earn a paycheck. That doesn't mean that on the quest to this passionate work, there won't be segments of jobs that aren't tedious and annoying. Nothing in life is a perfect fit immediately. We need to grow into our work and make our career what we find rewarding. Integrity was the final concept Hank shared with me in his special letter. Integrity has two meanings. Incorruptibility is the first. Being honest and standing up for what you think is right is evidence of strong character. Secondly, integrity or integration, as in the thought of unity or completeness, support the concept of developing your whole self, making sure life is fun and meaningful while you strive for success. Love and appreciation of others, the importance of education, integrity, sincerity, and hard work are important concepts that my brother shared. But even more importantly, he took the time to share them with me. He gave me the gift of a lifetime by writing that note. Without him here to tell me, I have known for 38 years that he cared about me and loved me. It made a huge difference in my life as I faced my teenage years without him by my side as a friend. I tell this story to you because I want you to realize the importance of not waiting to tell those you love how you feel. We never know the twists and turns life holds before us, and you may not have the chance in the future. So take the opportunity now and throughout your life to nurture your loved ones and make a difference in their lives, as my brother made in mine. You and your parents have been shaping what should lie within you throughout the last 18 years. As you grow and mature and develop your fortitude as an adult, make a conscious effort to gauge your progress against what you think should lie within you to develop a full and happy life. Take time to reflect on who you are and who you want to be. As our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, once said, in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years. Congratulations and blessings to you, our graduates, and all of our families. And finally, what you've all been waiting for, on behalf of the Board of Education and the entire Farmington School District, by the powers invested in me, I hereby declare the class of 2007 of North Farmington High School to be officially graduated. The Distinguished Alumnus Award, instituted at graduation 2000, is given annually to a graduate of North Farmington High School 
whose characteristics of heart, mind, and conduct evince a spirit of love and helpfulness for others. Like the honorees before him, actress Pam Dauber, women's Olympic gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser, humanitarian Drew Mahalik, news anchor Vernon Shaw, chemist businesswoman Jackie Atchow, physician Kevin Dayton, and attorney activist Gail Altenberg, the recipient of the 8th Annual Distinguished Alumnus Award, MD, PhD, Jeff Lazar, class of 1965, epitomizes that criteria. Medical doctor, PhD, or as I prefer to call him, Dr. Doctor. But whatever, Jeff Lazar is truly one of a kind. Following his graduation from North Farmington, he received both his BA and his MD from the University of Michigan, his PhD in pharmacology from the University of Heidelberg in Germany. His professional journey has carried him into research, teaching, and consulting. He's worked with and for Purdue, Brown, Duke, Vanderbilt, University of Michigan. He's done work for the Naval Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, as well as at Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C., and for central research for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. His resume is an embarrassment of riches, from awards to memberships to dozens of journal publications, all of which sound like a foreign language to me, to presentations, to patents, to research experiences. Currently, Jeff is the president and managing director of Lazar Associates based in Austin, Texas, a networked independent consultancy working in drug, device, and biologics development and biomedical research and education. I don't understand any of that either. What was not on Jeff's resume, however, was his experience several years ago as an expert presenter at North Farmington's Alumni Science and Technology Symposium. After a day spent on campus with our students, presenting how a drug goes from research to approval, Jeff pulled me aside and said, OK, Mr. Principal, you need to listen to me. OK, Mr. Doctor, Doctor, I responded. You have my undivided attention. You need to do something like this every year, he said but branch off into other subject areas beyond science. And if the truth be known, at that moment, Dr. Jeffrey David Lazar planted the seed for what has become our school's focus on yearly interdisciplinary themes and studies. In addition, since 2003, Jeff has religiously and quietly sent an annual check of support to North Farmington's Science Department to, as he says, find a small way to give thanks to both the place and the people who have so profoundly impacted my life. Jeff Lazar has modeled an ideal that we all recognize and cherish. He has never forgotten where he came from and has done so much to honor his alma mater. So now it's my turn. It's my honor and privilege to present the 8th Annual Distinguished Alumnus Award from the class of 1965, the furthest back that we've ever reached for this award, Mr. Doctor Doctor, to present the Distinguished Alumnus Award to a true North Star, a man whose intellect, integrity, idealism, and wisdom have not only fueled a career, but have fueled a life. The 2007 Distinguished Alumnus Award goes to Dr. Jeffrey David Lazar. <laughs> Jeff will receive uh, a frame medallion. Uh, there's a permanent plaque will be hung in the halls at school, as you know, and he'll have a, a brick engraved in his honor at Holland Field. Dr. Lazar. Thank you, Principal Jones, Superintendent Zervalik, President Bolson, and the members of the Board of Education, faculty of North Farmington High School, and most importantly, the class of 2007, for the honor you've bestowed upon me. To the graduates, their parents, their families, and their guests, I say heartiest congratulations for a job well done. But to echo Mrs. Zervalik's theme, this is a beginning. It's only a beginning. What we don't know is a beginning of what. And of course, that's the beauty of democracy. It's the beauty of freedom. It's the beauty of life in the United States. It's the beauty of opportunity. Many, many things have happened to you while you were a student here at North Farmington High School. Some you will happily remember. Others, check back in a few years. But the real impact of these things, the pleasant and the not so pleasant, 
is most likely something you may not realize for years to come. North is now embedded in your DNA. When those genes choose to express themselves is anyone's guess and most likely will be beyond your control. I want to share with you a story. It's the story of a student and a teacher, and it took place a touch more than 40 years ago. When I started here in 1961, I wanted to become a doctor. Back then, a doctor was somebody who played golf on Wednesday afternoon and drove a Cadillac. And that's sort of interesting because my father drove a Volkswagen and neither he nor I had ever held a golf club in our hands. But I wanted to become a doctor anyway. So I started North and I had this really terrific biology teacher. He was captivating. It didn't matter whether we were talking about the flow of fluids and nutrients through a leaf, or the biology of a frog, or some element of mammalian physiology. The next year, he was my chemistry teacher. He was just as terrific. We got along very well, and when he asked me to work as a lab assistant instead of going to study hall, I happily agreed. Now, you can ask Mr. Jones later what study hall is. I was told it doesn't exist anymore. I worked as a lab assistant until the day I graduated in June of 1965. That in itself is a curiosity because he kept me in the lab all those years despite my repeated attempts to blow it up. I never succeeded, but he sure did. And along the way, something happened to me. I became infected with scientific curiosity. My DNA got changed. In other words, I wanted to become more than a practicing physician. I headed off to Ann Arbor, and Mr. Jones has already suitably embarrassed me by telling you the rest of the story. But that's not the point of my talk. The object is not me. The object is you and its teachers, and it's one teacher in particular. As you listen to the rest of what I have to say, I want you to start thinking and never stop about how you might give back to the school. One of my lawyer friends recently used the term give forward. I like it. Give back and give forward. I've always loved the theater. Let me set a scene for you. The luncheon guests were seated around the table discussing life. One man, the CEO of a very prestigious corporation, decided to explain the problem with education. He argued, what's a kid going to learn from someone who's decided that his best option in life is to become a teacher? He reminded the guests what they say about teachers, those who can do, those who can't teach. To stress his point, he turned to another guest and said somewhat haughtily, you're a teacher, be honest, what do you make? This teacher, like many of your teachers who had a reputation for honesty, frankness, forthrightness, said, you want to know what I make? And he thought for a second. And then he began. He said, I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C-plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor. I can make kids through, sit through 40 minutes of class time when their parents can't make them sit for five minutes without a TV, a computer, a DVD player, an iPod, or whatever. You really want to know what I make, he said. He paused again, looked at everybody at the table. I make kids wonder. I make kids question. I make kids criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them have respect and take responsibility for their actions. I teach them to write, and then I make them write. I make them read, read, and read some more. I make them show all of their work in math. I make my students from other countries learn everything they need to know in English while preserving their unique cultural identities. I make my classroom a place where all of my students can feel safe. And finally, I make them understand that if they use the gifts they were given, if they work hard and follow their hearts, 
they can succeed in life. The teacher paused one last moment, and then he continued. Then, when people try to judge me by what I make, I can hold my head high and pay no attention because they are ignorant. You want to know what I make, he said. I make a difference. What do you make? It's a nice story. Mr. Jones told you five years ago about our inaugural science symposium, as we called it then, now the multidisciplinary symposium. And he told you that I pledged an endowment to the science department. It's now fully funded. And as part of that funding, I guess, I got forced to come up here and talk, even though you can tell I'm really very uncomfortable with public speaking and have very little to say. But I'm really here to challenge each one of you, challenge you to be successful in all aspects of your life, and then challenge you further to remember who helped you attain that success, not just your parents, but also your teachers and the school. I certainly know, I'm certainly convinced, but for folks such as my beloved chemistry and biology teacher, I wouldn't be standing here today. So don't leave and never come back. Leave and develop a deliberate plan to come back. Be it one year or 10 or even 40, however many it is, Rick. Now, one final thing. Um, thanks to the foundation, to Superintendent Zavalik's office, to Mr. Jones's office, and lots of other people, really too numerous to mention, we arranged for one other thing to happen today. There's a lovely young couple sitting almost directly across from me. And, uh, oh, they've actually stopped holding hands, which I think is terrific. So I can now introduce you to the science teacher whom I talked about. Mr. Hull, would you stand up, please? This is the man to whom I owe the greatest thanks for launching me on this marvelous ride, this career of mine. There's one little surprise more that I want to share, for you, share with you, and again, thanks to many of the people sitting up here with me. The fund that will support the science department at North Farmington High School, I hope in perpetuity, is named the Don Howell Fund. Thank you very much for your award and your honor, and I wish you only the best. This is a little awkward because I'm not sure Jeff really wanted me to do this, but the Don Howell Endowed Science Fund, the seed money from Jeff is $50,000. Thank you. Each year, the North Farmington senior class concludes their high school experience by giving a senior gift. Since the graduation of 2000, this gift has been formally announced at the graduation ceremony. Today, it is our turn. This gift symbolizes our gratitude to the students, teachers, and administrators of North that have shaped our high school experience. Proceeding classes have given such gifts as benches, a patio, and other physical improvements to the school. The most memorable gift of past years will be the towering grandfather clock standing tall at the entrance of Holland Field. It is with great pleasure, pride, and sincere gratitude that we, the North Farmington High School Class of 2007, present to the school a two-part senior gift. The interdisciplinary study, Humanity in Crisis, that we pursued this year has shaped the essence of our class. The class of 2007 is characterized by two attributes rarely seen in high schools today. As we have learned about genocide and the effects thereof, 
Our class developed the compassion necessary to turn apathy into empathy and awareness into activism. The class of 2007 is marked by an unparalleled solidarity with the sufferers of the gravest violations of human rights. As we saw, Paul Rusa Sabagina, as well as survivors of the Armenian Genocide and the Holocaust, and after having heard their stories and having heard of the atrocities that they had first-handedly endured, we went out and decided we would not tolerate those same crimes on our watch. From our NETS fundraiser, buying NETS for people in refugee camps to alleviate the calamity that is malaria, to meeting with representatives holding rallies and letter campaigns, asking the state of Michigan to divest from Sudan, this class has been involved, unlike any before it, in truly changing not only our community, but our world. The spirit of giving our time, our money, and our voice to those around the world who are impoverished and voiceless is a product of four great years at North. As we conclude our high school experience, I am proud to announce on the behalf of the class of 2007 that the first portion of the class gift will be in line with our year-long efforts. Symbolic of our fight for justice and human dignity, and of the charitable nature of this group of students, our senior class has decided to donate on behalf of North Farmington High School to an organization that specializes in helping the underprivileged around the world. No non-governmental organization better fits our search criteria than Save the Children. To commemorate the goodwill of our class and the undying resolve with which my peers and I have sought to reduce global poverty, violence, and injustice, this donation represents the last act of generosity that we can have as students at North Farmington. This gift is to symbolize our determination to never forget the lessons we learned at North and as we will continue through our daily lives and steadfast civic and humanitarian activity, impose on the world around us positive change. Along with this donation, we realized that without North, we would not have had the environment in which we came to thrive. We found causes to become passionate about due to our inter interdisciplinary studies. In order to preserve the quality of ongoing studies, a portion of our gift will go to the study fund itself to ensure future students the same opportunities we were given. This will fund such things as special speakers, community book reads, and the commemorative edition of the Northern Star newspaper, which reflects the spirit of the study, providing the community with a tangible model of our efforts to go above the standards of a normal high school. We are proud to donate the second portion of our gift to next year's study, Our Town Detroit, There's No Place Like Home. We would like to thank the senior board, the class of 2007, and especially our parents for supporting this gift. And thank you especially, North Farmington High School. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason, bringing 
Learning something we must learn, and we are led to those who help us most grow if we let them, and we help them in return. Well, I don't know if I believe that's true, but I know I'm who I am today because I knew you. Like a comet pulled from orbit as it passes the sun, like a stream that meets a boulder halfway through the world. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? Because I Share a 
Seniors, prepare for roll call.
Amber Rosizi. Laura Evangelista. Samantha Feinberg. Yu Lee. Ashley Caplo. Dorothy Hebner. Yasmin Abdul Hamid. Jillian Abro. Alyssa Abruzzo. Ashley Adro Pearson. Jared Adler. Andrew Ahn. Jason Ailman. Michael Allen. Bradley Alonzo. Ryan Andrews. Deanna and Sarah. Peter Anthony. Alyssa Arden. Claire Armbruster. Kara Arndt. Jacqueline Arnold. Silva Arslanian. Christine Audette. Segilola Ayani. Elizabeth Iorende. <laughs> Katya Bashrush. Serveta Bayrami. <laughs> Jordan Balbus. <laughs> Ashley Barker. Jamaria Batiste. <laughs> David Michael Boffman. <laughs> Anthony Beal. <laughs> Ryan Beers. Alante Beatty. Addison Beavis. Kellen Beckworth. Jenna Behrman. Kevin Bell. Adam Benish. Lisa Bennett. Chris Benson. Lior Barris. Stephen Battelle. Michael Bickerstaff. Jonathan Bills. Samantha Blair. George Blake.
Shelby Booker. Michael Bowman. Matthew Brown. Caroline Brozovich. Michelle Budai. Kevin Bernstein. Lana Boutris. Patrick Cahill. Megan Carter. Thea Maria Casilla. Amelie Chagron. Benjamin Cherney. Jesse Cherniak. Jacqueline Chopjin. Steve Chow. Aaron Clark. Amanda Cleavy. Allison Cohen. Zachary Cohen. Stacy Comstock. Jeffrey Cormier. Max Cornfield. <clears throat> Lindsey Cross. Nicole Culp. Kyle Cummings. Mohammed Kumalai. Lauren Davies. Brandon Davis. Horia Dirjma, excuse me. Horia Dirjmarescu. Sahani Disanayaka. <laughs> Stephen Doty. <laughs> Elizabeth Doyle. <laughs> Elizabeth Drucker. <laughs> Jacqueline Duchesne. Amy Dunn. David Elliott. Keith Ellis. Samantha Feldman. Laura Field Summers. Tamur Finling. Catherine Finley. Brent Flusty. Victoria Frederick. Kimberly Galley. Lauren Galper. David Gamu. Sarah Gamu. <laughs> Stephen Gappy. <laughs> Kate Gardner.
Stephen Garfield Turner. Amanda Gerke. Nathan Genty. Mark George. Michelle Georges. Max Glick. Jill Goldberg. Rebecca Goldberg. Evan Goldfarb. Alana Goldman. Netta Golenberg. Michael Galfetto. Robin Ganti. Erica Goodman. Mara Goodman. Shayna Goodman. Rachel Griffith. Michael Grinter. Sarah Habersmith. Katie Hans. Stephanie Harbin. Kelsey Harper. Angela Harrison. Raksha Hamenth. Kayla Hassano. Jennifer Hiltz. Eric Hong. Grace Hong. Jennifer Honig. Simone Yat Kwong Horman. Kalia Humphreys. Bilal Hussein. Haley Imhoff. Brandon Jacobs. Craig James. Angela Jargis. Candice Jarjosa. Sarah Jessup. Ashley Jones. Jennifer Kalish. Marnie Kalmus. Kevin Kamis. Brittany Cannon. Todd Kaplan. Daniel Kaptur. Ronnie Carmo. Kristen Karub. Linus Kasputis. Brittany Kassab. Christine Kendall. Patrick King. Daniel Kipper. Woo! 
Angela Kanja. Claire Coratia. Brian Kostukovsky. Marissa Kresh. Eric Krisenfeld. Melissa Kritzer. Amanda LaBurge. Troy Lambert. Chelsea Landau. Mackenzie Larson. Jacqueline Laskowski. Jeffrey Lawley. Kristen Lawrence. Rachel Lebovic. Danielle LeSerf. Eric Lee. Joey Lebov. Timothy Leto. Alisa Leonovich. Zoe Lesser. Joshua Lipnick. Nikolai Livshiz. Alex Lowy. Elliot Lori. Daniel Lubin. John Lutzai. Tiffany Luce. Mary Catherine McDonald. Evan Mafasoli. Brian Maisie. Anthony Malizia. Aaron Maley. Rachel Manna. Ian Manuzak. Kendra Marshall. Paul Martin. Ahmad Masri Eliafawi. Jeffrey Matean. Matthew Maurer. Catherine McManus. Robert Mihal. Jenna Michelin. Alicia Middlebrooks. Michael Miko. Lauren Mall. Robin Moore. Emily Navis. Alana Nettleman. 
Melissa Nestor. Melissa Newman. Alexi O'Day. Jamie Olin. Charles Operthauser. Iris Paraska. Andrea Park. Fadi Pata. Katherine Palukowitz. Landria Peacock. Elizabeth Potoski. Emily Phillips. Kelly Phillips. Sean Pickard. Lindsay Plummer. Caitlin Poyer. Aaron Porras. Charles Peretta. Devin Porter. Tabitha Casus. Amit Rama. Lauren Ramsey. Brent Redmond. Chad Reese. Elizabeth Riggan. Sarah Ring. Samantha Rinky. David Roberto. Dirk Roberts. Julie Robinson. Danielle Rogers. Aaron Rosen. Ilana Rosenbloom. Amy Rosenfeld. Jeremy Rowe. Charles Ryan. Brian Sachs. Danielle Sanders. Ricky Sanders. Alexander Sapik. Gina Scalisi. Alec Scarlett. Angela Schmidt. Jan Schneewind. Jillian Schroeder. Michael Schroeder. Matthew Schultz. Jacqueline Schwartz.
Nicole Shamoon. Sean Shapiro. Antoine Sharp. Jay Shahade. Stephen Sherbrooke. Evan Sherman. Zachary Silverman. Danny Situ. Jennifer Situ. Angela Smeto. Beverly Smith. Deshauna Smith. Morgan Somer. Chelsea Spencer. Alicia Steele. Joshua Stillman. Jacob Stocker. Melissa Stokoski. Carly Stolman. Seth Strasberger. Adam Sutcher. Shohei Suzuki. Gina Swaydan. Evan Swinger. Michael Taub. Danielle Taubman. Lenita Taylor. Caitlin Tetrick. Amanda Timmer. David Tobin. Kevin Tobin. Steven Tomkovich. Garen Tarosian. Andrea Tracy. Kerry Turkovich. Kelsey Twig. Carly Vance. Matthew Vartanian. Marnie Velik. Jason Vincent. Eric Vorenberg. Seth Wald. John Walker. Shelby Wallach. Samantha Warsh. Emma Weaver. Brian Weiserman. Paul Wilner. (laughs) 
Lauren Elizabeth McCullough. Shayna Wolk. Sharice Woolard. Matthew Yari. Alvin Yaldo. Ferris Jason Yaldo. Emin Yelizaro. Paul Jeffrey Young. Dustin Yu. Danielle Zaft. Raina Zdrojewski. Stuart Zeltzer. Daniel Zimberg. Just put them on here. We'll get them afterwards. Don't you think? Yep, definitely. Graduates of the class of 2007. Since the reign of King Henry VIII in the 15th century, individuals who have completed formal study have been entitled to wear a scholarly cap and gown symbolizing their accomplishments. From this cap, your mortarboard hangs a tassel. It has special significance and tradition as it represents your transition from student to graduate. Will the class of 2007 please rise? At this time, it is my honor to instruct you to move your tassel from the left to the right side of your cap, signifying your graduation. Congratulations. Now graduates, prepare for the recessional. 